Hey guys, I'm sitting here in front of my uh, reloading station here in my in the corner of the the wilderness, and um, I am looking at improving the accuracy on the 6.5 PRC. So, as you've seen from the previous video, I managed to get it down to a 0 0.3 inch group. Um, I had a couple of comments saying that the extreme spread was 33 and I shouldn't be happy with that. Well, in fact, I don't really go with the extreme spread. I go with standard deviation or a deviation of 14, which is not too bad. Um, I would prefer if it was under 10. Um, most of my other rifles are under 10. For instance, the uh, 270 is a 9 um, SD. Um, the 243 is 4SD and the 6.5 Creedmoor is a 2SD. The only other one um, that's a little bit higher is my a 223, which is a, something like 17SD. So I don't really have problems with, and I don't do a heck of a lot of long range shooting anymore. Um, so what I have have done now is purchase some brass and some new primers. What I've been using up until now is um, the brass from the Hornady CX bullets that I purchased, the, the Outfitter ones. Now, as you know, I've just dropped them. <coughs> as you know, I um, didn't really get a good grip with those. I got an absolute shocking grip. Now, what I didn't mention in my last test, in my last video, in regards to off this journey is that over the period I was using RWS primers in this, I was using um, resized brass from the, the factory ammunition that I purchased. And um, I think it, th it started to stretch, the load started to stretch the brass quite a bit. Um, the primer pocket on one of them, you would have seen in the video that I had said that we had felt a bit of pressure in one. One of the primer pockets was um, pretty loose. Um, that wasn't for the pressure from that load, it was the pressure from a previous load where I might not have cleaned the lube properly off the off the brass on the previous load. It was a little bit slack going in, it wasn't too bad, so I thought it, it wasn't popping out the primer, and it didn't pop out the primer. So, I used RWS primers. Um, give it a sec, I'll have a look and see where the... RWS primers, they were expensive, £17.50 for, uh, for 100 That's a lot of money for primers. However, I have decided to move away and we'll double check the, the load and see if we get much difference. I've never tried MagTech primers before. I've got Muron ones that I'm going to try as well, but I'm going to try the MagTech pro primers. I've also went down and brought and bought a um, brand new brass I've went and bought a uh, some um, Norma brand new brand new brass um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to load up a test load um, I'm going to do five rounds to see what the groups like and then I'm going to do five rounds to
and I'm going to do five rounds to um, to see what the the speed's like. So yesterday afternoon was an interesting afternoon. We had a pretty good afternoon. Um, it was a bit rain, windy and a bit rainy um, when I was doing the five shot group, but it still came under that 0 0.3 inch uh, or around about that 0 0.3 inch, which was which is fine. That could have been me or it could have been just the uh, um, it could have been the ammo, but I doubt it was the ammo. Um, so the journey for, so far was that we changed the brass. So put brand new Norma brass. We changed the primer. We used Magtech primer instead of the RWS primer. Now, I am going to do a test load with the RW pre uh, RWS primer and see what the um, if there's any difference because I am seeing like a 50 FPS difference uh, in between what I was getting um, the other day than what I was yesterday. Um, but all in all, it's looking good. I think we're ready. We're an SD of 10. So I brought the SD down, which is good. It was SD of 14. Now we're uh, an SD of 10. So uh, for those guys who are saying, oh, it's still an extreme spread of 24. Well, it's still an extreme spread of 24. The first shot was on a cold barrel. So there's a high chance that a, a first speed test shot was on a cold barrel. So there's a high chance that that could have been one of the problems um i don't know uh, we could have had a a lower charge on one of the uh, on one of my uh, rounds on the first round i don't know i don't think so um it could have been anything um all i can do is retest however i think i'm there i genuinely think i'm there i think i can manage to get this rifle out to a thousand yards accuracy uh, accurately um, try it out to 500 yards maybe first and then out to 1000 yards and see how we go um, and not bad from a factory rifle to be honest it is completely factory stock rifle I, it's straight from the factory it's a factory stock, it's a factory barrel it's a factory action it is performing very well for a factory rifle the, now there's no custom like this, this rifle cost me £1200 Um no no custom parts on it at all other than the sling and the scope and I put a rail on it that's you can't really call that custom when I haven't customized anything so I'm ready to go next uh, the next job is to take this out to range and actually shoot it and have a bit more fun so I'm going to load up some ammunition today maybe 20 or 30 rounds and uh, see how we get on <laughs> Out to longer ranges. I've got some frozen milk jugs, I think, in the freezer that need to that never got used over a winter. I might use that. So anyway, keep an eye on the space. I'll catch you again. Uh, it has been a journey. I am learning all about how to reload for Magnum and stuff like that. Um, I'm making mistakes. I have made mistakes, and I am I'm I'm flattening the flattening the grooves or tightening the curves or whatever you want to call it. Anyway. Someday the mint will get me and the law never will. Is that a song? Oh yeah, Jukes of Hazard. Anyway, 
Have a good one. Stay safe and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.